What is a protein? Proteins are long chains of amino acids joined together by peptide bonds. Peptide bonds are a covalent chemical bond linking two consecutive amino acid monomers along a peptide or protein chain. Amino acid. An amino acid consists of an alpha carbon which is bonded to four things. One, a H atom. The other one, a side chain, which can be a methyl group and many other things. On the other side is bonded to NH2, which is the amino group. And on lastly is bonded to COOH, which is the carboxylic group. A peptide bond is a chemical bond formed between uh, two molecules when the carboxyl group of one molecule reacts with the amino group of the other molecule, uh, releasing a molecule of water. This is a dehydration synthesis reaction, also known as a condensation reaction, and usually occurs between amino acids. The primary structure of a protein refers to the sequence of amino acids in the polypeptide chain. Uh, it is held together by peptide, by peptide bonds that are made during the process of protein biosynthesis. The two ends of the polypeptide chain are referred to as the carboxyl terminus and the amino terminus, uh, based on the nature of the free group on each extremity. Secondary structure uh, refers to highly regular local superstructures on the actual polypeptide backbone chain. Third, in tertiary structure, the alpha helix and beta seeds are folded into a compact globular structure. The folding is driven uh, by the nonspecific hydrophobic interactions. Quaternary structure consists of the aggregation of two or more individual polypeptide chains that operate as a single functional unit. Titration curve. Before we start discussing about this titration curve, we should know that the pK affects an amino acid structure. Here there is an example of alanine. In this graph, the y-axis represents the pH and the x-axis represents the equivalence of OH. At the beginning, the pK is 2.34. If we add NaOH, the hydroxyl ions are neutralized by the H plus ions, and the pKa starts to increase. Then the carboxyl group donates H plus ions and it gets neutralized after it becomes constant. After all this addition, the pKa starts to increase. And at this point, the alanine becomes sweeter ion. It means it has a positive and a negative charge.
The addition of OH minus ions causes the increase of the pK, and as a result, the pK becomes 9.64. Alanine starts to donate its H plus ions, and the pK becomes constant at 9.64. And the further addition of hydroxyl ions causes the increase of the pH. So, as I said before, the pK affects the amino acid structure. Here there is an example. As the graph represents it, the, if the amino acid, the amida group is positive, the pH is less than 2. If the amida group is positive and the carboxyl group is negative, the pH is almost 6. And lastly, if the carboxyl group is negative, the pH is more than 10. Now we are going to talk about the isoelectric point. If the pH is less than the isoelectric point, the chart is positive. If the pH equals the isoelectric point, the chart is zero. If the pH is greater than the isoelectric point, the chart is negative. Or an amino acid is zero. There is a formula for calculating the isoelectric point that is the pK1 plus pK2 divided by 2. If we have three isoelectric points, we choose the closest to each other. In this case, if we do the calculation, the isoelectric point is 6.015. Now let's see what is a buffer. A buffer is a solution that can resist pH changes upon the addition of acid or basic components. So that's why it is able to neutralize small amounts of added acid or base and maintaining the pH of a solution relative stable. So this is very important for processes and or reactions that require a specific pH range. Now we're going to see types of buffers. Imagine we have a container with a weak acid in it. Then we pour some strong base. Some quantity of the weak acid will transform into its conjugate salt. So the new pH can be regulated depending on the concentration of the strong base that we pour. The strong base was regulated. The same happens with a basic buffer, but instead of regulating a strong base, it regulates a strong acid. This means there's a weak base transforming into its salt. The same exact thing is what a protein does when it functions as a buffer. How does it do it in this case? There's a random protein and both of its ends represent it, carboxylic end and amino end. In an acidic medium, protons are transferred to the amino end, so it becomes protonated and acts as a weak acid to regulate the mixture, so it isn't that acid. In the second case, when the protein is in a basic medium, the OH takes a proton from the carboxylic end to make a molecule of water. Also, the carboxylic end has a negative charge that makes it be a weak base, so the mixture is a little bit less basic. 